hearing aids and assisted listening devices. The goal is to find amplification appropriate for the patient's needs and capabilities to provide the greatest possible enhancement for speech understanding. There are different challenges when you're working with young children, those with multiple handicaps, adults who deny the need for treatment, who are in denial of their hearing loss, and the elderly in declining mental and physical capabilities. What a hearing aids are essentially are miniature, personalized public address systems. So sounds strike the microphone, they're submitted electronically to a miniature loudspeaker where they're amplified and then it is set into the ear. So at their most basic, they're a amplification system. But there's much more to it than simple amplification. Hearing aids today are designed to fit a person's hearing loss. So if the person is struggling in the high frequencies, but not in the low frequencies, only the high frequency sounds are going to be amplified. Hearing aids fit a person's hearing loss. They provide improved clarity, enhanced signal to noise ratios. So the signal is separated from the noise. The hearing aids can pull out what a noise is versus what a signal is, a signal is, and then amplify the speech signal and not the noise. They provide compression circuitry. When people age and their outer hair cells get damaged, in addition to the outer hair cells not amplifying sounds, they also don't compress loud sounds. So our healthy outer hair cells make sure that loud sounds don't come up our brain too loud. When the outer hair cells are damaged, they lose the ability to do this. Hearing aids provide compression circuitry that reduce loud sounds so that they don't become uncomfortably loud for the person with outer hair cell damage. Hearing aids also have directional microphones that help pick up the more important sounds coming directly to a person than the background sounds at their side and behind them. Two hearing aids are much better than one hearing aid. So the primary goal of hearing aids is to restore audition to as near normal a state as possible. Wearing two hearing aids provides more improvement than one. So we have two ears for a reason, just like we have two eyes for a reason. They work together. When both ears are amplified, the speech is clearer, louder, and less contaminated by background noise. Additionally, localization is improved. Localization is determining where the sound is coming from. There are different types of hearing aids. All the way over at the right is the behind the ear hearing aid, followed by in the ear hearing aids, which are medium size, and the smallest completely in the canal. Now the smaller a hearing aid, the less powerful it is. Also, smaller hearing aids are more difficult for people with dexterity issues to man manage and maneuver. Bigger hearing aids are more durable and more powerful, but they're less desirable because they're, for most people, for some people, because they're more noticeable. And the number one reason that people don't get hearing aids is because they don't want to be viewed as old. Okay, so there's a vanity issue there. Behind the ear hearing aids provide mild to profound losses. They're the most powerful. There is this new breed of behind-the-ear hearing aids called open-fit hearing aids that are significantly smaller than traditional behind-the-ear hearing aids, cosmetically appealing, very comfortable, and work for moderate to mild hearing losses. With an open-fit hearing aid, there's just a very small piece that sits behind the ear and then a clear tube that inserts into the ear canal. In-the-ear hearing aids are the most prevalent type of hearing aid. There's circuitry, which is built in the ear mold, then we have in the canal and completely in the canal. And they get smaller and smaller. As they get smaller and smaller, they may become more cosmetically appealing, but they become less powerful. Selecting a hearing aid for an adult depends on a number of factors. The first factor is their motivation. If a person isn't willing to wear the hearing aid, there's no sense getting them a hearing aid. So the person has to want to improve their hearing. Their age is also a factor, their speech recognition abilities, their financial resources, 
these hearing aids are very expensive. So they cost, you know, one to $3,000 per aid. So you don't want to sell a person a hearing aid that they can't afford. And there are physical limitations. Remember I said those with dexterity issues will have trouble manipulating the very small hearing aids. The general goal of any hearing aid is to provide reception of soft, moderate, and loud sounds in a variety of environments while maintaining comfortable listening. So soft sounds become louder, moderate sounds also become more audible, and loud sounds are made to be comfortable and not too loud. Sometimes selecting hearing aid can be difficult to do for children with coexisting conditions. You want to select instruments that are electroacoustically flexible so that modifications can be made as the child grows. Hearing aid acceptance and orientation. There are several reasons why children might be resistant to hearing aids. They could be physically uncomfortable, acoustically unpleasant, or cosmetically unappealing. So when you're working with a child, let the child participate in selecting the colors and the styles of the hearing aid. And now today there are all sorts of like hot pink, um, you know, fluorescent colors. A child can have a lot of fun in choosing their hearing aids. Same with the cochlear implants. The child's acceptance of a hearing aid is critical for rehabilitation. So attitudes portrayed by the audiologist, the speech pathologist, and family and other members make a lasting impression. So everybody should be very encouraging of the child wearing their hearing aid. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me so much whether or not adult wears a hearing aid. That can be their choice. But for children learning speech and language, they must always be wearing their hearing aids. It's so important that children wear their hearing aids or their cochlear implants. For adult acceptance, being clear with complete instructions and proper care and use, expected benefits and limitations, adults need to have realistic expectations about their hearing aids and how to use their hearing aids in order to succeed with them. During a hearing aid orientation, you want to go over how to clean a hearing aid. So after you take the hearing aid out, you just rub it with a tissue and you put it in its hearing aid box. Practice taking it in and out. Hearing aids, especially if they're in the canal or in the ear, they're hard to put in and out because they're molded to your ear. So they can be a little tricky at first. So you want to spend time practicing it, storing it overnight, taking the batteries and um, putting new batteries in and out. This is also something that should, you should practice with a person because these batteries are small, just like the hearing aids. Basic troubleshooting, how to use a hearing aid with a telephone. So you use a hearing aid with a telephone by holding up the receiver of the telephone to the microphone of the hearing aid. So if the microphone of the hearing aid is at the top of the hearing aid, that's where you hold the telephone. Insurance and damage policies, recommended follow-up and monitoring. And initially, you want to follow up with the patient every three months or so just to make sure that they're using their hearing aid correctly and that they're satisfied. Cochlear implants are intended for patients with hearing impairments so severe that they can't be helped with other less invasive devices. This allows for direct stimulation of the auditory nerve. Both children and adults can be candidates for cochlear implantation. Assisted listening devices. Sometimes hearing aids may necessitate the use of assisted listening devices. So let's say there's a lot of background noise or reverberation, a person might want to also get an FM system to wear with their hearing aids or cochlear implants. With an FM system, the teacher, let's say we're in a classroom, wears a small microphone and the signals are transmitted along a radio frequency directly to a receiver worn by the listener. This improves the signal to noise ratio. So wherever the teacher is in the classroom, her voice is gonna be sent directly to the hearing aid or the cochlear implant or just a receiver if that's what the child's wearing. All children benefit from FM systems, not just children with hearing loss. Every child can benefit from wearing an FM system because the teacher's voice is sent directly to the child's ear.
Other assisted listening devices include infrared systems, which operate in a similar manner as the FM systems. These are useful with TVs and live theaters or movements, movies. Um, telephones with built-in amplifiers are also considered assisted listening devices. Text messaging has become a very handy assisted listening device for those with hearing loss.